morning, everyone. Thank you for being here in this amazing city. And thank you for the organizers to invite me to be here also. Uh, my name is Erika. Uh, I'm a PhD student in Brazil and also uh, I'm here in Europe for one year at BMI Institute, Brain Mind Institute, uh, APFL, Switzerland. And I'm going to present you uh, some data from my PhD research. And today I'm going to speak about early life stress in neuropsychiatry. Uh, the first thing we have to take into account is emotional behavior and cognition are influenced by several factors, including genetic factors, environmental factors, but also the interaction between them. In the early development, environment is very important in this relation due to neurobiological reasons, and I'm going to talk about these neurobiological reasons to you. Uh, this is just to show you a sample of... Uh, I'm sorry, I know it's better. <laughs> Uh, just to show you, there is a, an amazing account of papers uh, in the internet that you can find in this re relationship between ear life stress and psychopathology. Here you have something about executive functions uh, for impulsive behavior as well. Sorry, as well uh, adult depression uh, and also uh, for post-traumatic disorder. And uh, all of these papers, not all, but uh, the major of this paper, they are related to HPA axis that we are going to talk about this uh, in a minute. So another thing is important is to define what is early is life, early life stress. So we have some different kinds of, and here you can have abuse, not sexual abuse only, but also physical and psychological abuse. Neglect physical care and the caretakers don't take care of the children of the baby, and also emotional neglect. They are so uh, wonderful for the uh, children as a sexual abuse, and also some features of uh, families, families with uh, 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 aggressiveness behavior and drug addiction, parents or no responsive families out as well. So I have here the selective cell death and also the functional validation of synapses and so what's important to have in mind is if the, the cell or the synapse are used they will be kept by the brain but if they are not stimulated they will simply disappear so this is a functional validation and this is the open door to the environment that can influence the brain and I'm sorry the figure is in Portuguese <laughs> Uh, here we have neuroplasticity, and this is just uh, like an illustration about this um, property of the brain. So here in that graph you can see uh, the, in the beginning of our life the influence that the environment can, can take uh, to the brain is really high and is decreasing with the time but never touch the zero. What this means, uh, even in adulthood, even in uh, later ages we have this influence uh, of the environment into the brain but there is critical periods for this and for sure the prenatal period and the childhood they are the most important periods for this interaction and this influence oh sorry uh, so the rational here uh, would be the early life environment in this case through a neurobiological neurobiological alterations will lead to emotional behavior uh, and what we think about is when this emotional behavior becomes a neuropsychiatric disease. So to understand this, it's really important to think about no, not only the genetic aspects of this influence, but also the uh, environmental influences. And this is an um, amazing uh, schema that Professor Christian Heim used <coughs> in 2008. And here you can see in the top, we have the genetic aspect, we have the environmental as aspect, and this uh, black arrow there shows us uh, this interaction. And this will be the, the reasons, the, the factors for the development. So this will uh, give rise to a phenotype of our CNS. And after this, we have the social aspects. In one side, we have trauma and chronic stress. In the other side, we have social support or treatment. So these things together, uh, acting into the CNS phenotype, will give the outcome that will be behavior responsive or physiological response and also the interaction between this. 
So this was for uh, 2008, and how we have an amazing update. This paper was published in February this year. Uh, and the first, uh, here is pink, but there is, I think, beige uh, box. You have the transgen transgeneration genetic aspects, what you bring for your life today. And if this thing can interact with early life stress, but it will be depending on the type of stress you have, the intensity, the duration, the previous stress or not, you have this or not, the age, so this is for us the most important point. Uh, depending on the age that you have this early life stress, it will be more or less uh, important to the development, and also the gender. And immediately, immediately after this, we have short-term effects that are uh, from hormones to epigenetic change, so, uh, so immediately to this. And after this, you can uh, adapt or not or for this uh, stress. So this is called neuro at long-term uh, adaptations. And after this outcome, you have uh, or a stress inoculation in one side with his resilience and stress coping, and will be uh, able to transmit this for the next generations in the beige box in that side in the cycle starts again or on the other hand you have stress intoxication vulnerability and mental disorders so this is, will be uh, able to go to other generations as well so it was an update for that system or that uh, uh, model operational model and from basic research we have a lot of papers I just uh, bring these two that are really um, recent as well. Uh, they are talking about how this uh, early life stress or early life adversity can uh, influence the emotional behavior of animals. And just to let you know, it's just I'm not, I'm not going so uh, in detail in this, but uh, this experiment was did with mouse. And in this, uh, after the early life stress, you can see the completely difference between males and females uh, programming in these neurons. So in male, you have in the letter C, the upper part, we have control animals uh, which were not uh, uh, applied the stress in these animals. And in the bottom, you have the prenatal stress. So as you can see, the male will increase the spines, will increase the length of the neuron, and also the complexity. And it's completely the opposite for male, for female animals, sorry, uh, that the spine will be decreased, also the length and also the complexity of the neurons. So it's really important to take into account that it's not only the uh, environment, but also uh, some biological uh, features. And here from uh, applied research, we have several studies suggesting this correlation between early life stress or early life adversity and psychiatric disorder, mainly for depression, social phobia and PTSD, and borderline personality disorder. But what together this data show? Mental disorder are a product of alteration in the CNS, and from the remage, you have um, mainly uh, alteration in HPA axis and limbic areas. So just to remind, remind you about the limbic areas, we have mainly amygdala, uh, hypocampus, cingulate cortex, and hypothalamus, and also the prefrontal cortex is not shown here. Uh, this was a, a review that we did some time ago. Uh, just to let you know in details, here you can see a frontal and temporal hypometabolism uh, consistent with affective illness in bipolar disorders, patients, sorry. Here we have uh, the total volume of amygdala with a control subject that called this normal volume. And when a patient with borderline personality disorder, the, the total volume of amygdala is increasing. And also here uh, we show uh, with patients, uh, I mean, it's not on, only patients, but they have a control group with health subjects, women, and two other groups, women depressed with no history of abuse, and women depressed but with history of abuse. And you can see in the, in the gray arrows, these are these women depressed with 
as a history of abuse in their life. So the life, especially during neurodevelopment of critical periods, can lead to alterations in emotionality brain circuitry. So uh, our uh, rationale for this would be the early life events or adverse early life stress through the neurobiological mechanism will lead to emotional behavior. So if these early life events are adverse, probably the emotional behavior will be disrupted. So uh, which neurobiological mechanism is this? HPA axis and limbic areas and what, what we are naming emotional behavior disrupted is depression, anxiety disorder, personality disorder. So it is a little bit uh, far from the, the main object for the, the, this presentation, but I think it's good to talk to psychologists and therapists. Uh, we have some, uh, analyzing all this data, we have some information that will be really useful to us, to our clinical approach. The first thing is that amygdala participates in emotional mnemonic process, leading to emotional reactions independently of the stimulus awareness. So probably this is a scientific explanation about the operation mode of uh, early maladaptive schemas from Darf Young. And also, uh, not only the amygdala functioning, but also uh, through repetitive stimulation, the neural pathway is strengthened. So this is called a long-term potentiation effect. So increasing the chance of being activated again in automatic, non-conscious way. And here, when after uh, psychotherapy, as a psychotherapy result, we have these neurophysiological alterations exactly in the same brain areas that we, our parents, sorry, it's time. Oh, sorry, no, I'm finishing. <laughs> uh, uh, so it is the same area, so after psychotherapy, you can see this alteration in the brain. So to concluding, uh, early life stress has been related to development of emotional disturbance late in life. Nevertheless, recent studies have shown a new operation model in this relation, depending on genetic background. Different kind of stressor has been cited as sexual and psychological abuse, but also emotional and physical neglect. Besides the well-known influence of the emotional behavior, other life stress also influences cognition abilities, which are independent from emotional status. These aversive situations early in life have important neuro neurobiological implications in brain areas and circuits, responsible for emotion, reward, behavior, and also for cognition as general such as limbic areas, HPAs, among other. Our life stress is able to produce long-term consequences, certainly limited by structural and functional changes in core brain circuitries, and uh, there is currently a large amount of knowledge about how disturbance in the emotional and or physical early life uh, is able to program things alterations in the brain circuit as a whole, and to protein synthesis, neurogenesis, neuroplasticity, and so on. So the effects are so uh, spread. Thank you for your attention. Uh, here is my email. If you want uh, some of the papers, I will happy to uh, send it to you. And I'll be happy also to have questions. Thank you.